Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. We're going to talk about treating high blood pressure with lisinopril. Lisinopril is an ACE inhibitor. It's also sold under the trade names of Zestril and Prinavil. It's in the top five prescriptions in the United States. It was originally approved for treating high blood pressure in 1987 and for treating congestive heart failure in 1993. It improves survival after a heart attack, and it seems to be quite helpful in diabetics who have kidney disease and who have peripheral neuropathy. Now, it's the third ACE inhibitor that's been marketed. The first one, Captopril, is a structural analog. In other words, chemically, it's pretty similar to the Brazil pit venom. The next one was an allopril that was just a little change from that. It was a prodrug. You'd have to metabolize it in order for it to be effective. But then they changed it again and now we have lisinopril. Lisinopril differs from the other medicines in that it has very good tissue penetration. It has a long half-life. It's not a prodrug, so the drug works as is, and it's excreted in the urine pretty much unchanged. High blood pressure, as everyone knows, is a very important medical condition. It increases the risk of damage to the brain, to the heart, to the kidneys. It can lead to stroke and heart attacks and congestive heart failure and kidney disease. But what most people don't understand is that treating high blood pressure requires more than just taking a pill. It requires certain other attention, attention to diet. Cut down on the amount of sodium. Watch out for the amount of fat you consume. If you're a smoker, get off the cigarettes. Exercise, of course. If you're diabetic, make sure it's under control. And if you have high blood lipids, well, do something about it. We know that drugs like the Cinepril seem to control the blood pressure when you're lying down and when you're standing up. Usually it does that without increasing the heart rate and usually it does that without increasing the likelihood that you're going to be dizzy when you stand up. The effectiveness of the drug can be increased if necessary by taking a diuretic, a water pill. It seems to work very well on Caucasians if you happen to be uh, black, it tends to work less well, but that can be made up by taking a diuretic along with it. It seems to work to reduce the blood pressure. If you take it within an hour, it's going to work. It's going to be maximally effective in the blood system after about six hours. It takes up to two to four weeks to get you the maximum effect. That's about 24 hours, and abruptly discontinuing it is not going to lead to a rebound in your blood pressure. Most blood pressure medicines work pretty much the same, at least as far as the numbers are concerned. And lisinopril is as good as any other. It has relatively poor bioavailability, so once you take the drug, only about a quarter of it is going to be absorbed into the system. And if you happen to have a bad heart, congestive heart failure, maybe only a sixth of the medicine is going to be absorbed. We know it has a long half-life, so it can last the whole day in most people, but you do have to check the blood pressure before you take the next dose in order to make sure that you're getting the maximum effect you want. Most blood pressure medicines, lisinopril included, are going to reduce the upper number, the systolic pressure, by about 8 millimeters of mercury, and they're going to reduce the bottom number by about 5 millimeters of mercury. And interestingly enough, the lowest dose is probably the most effective dose in about 75% of the people who take these medicines. We know that all of the ACE inhibitors probably are pretty much the same. This one, you start taking at a dose of 10 milligrams a day. You can slowly increase it up to a total maximum of about 40 milligrams a day, but most people don't need to go that high. Most people are either at 10 or 20 milligrams. And for some people, if they're going to begin taking it with a water pill, maybe it's a good idea to start with a little lower dose, maybe about 5 milligrams to start. Now, if you have a heart attack, this drug could save your life. If you take lisinopril within an hour of taking a heart attack, take a relatively low dose, 5 milligrams, then you increase your survivability by about 10%. So that's pretty good. You might have to reduce it to only about 2.5 milligrams if your blood pressure is low, if your sodium is low, or if your kidney function isn't very good. And we know that you'll start with a dose of about 5 milligrams if you have congestive heart failure. Well, there's no need to alter the dose if you happen to have kidney failure, but if you're a pregnant woman in the second or third trimester, this drug is not for you because it can cause some teratogenicity. In other words, it can cause some birth defects. We also know that it can increase your potassium level. 
So that's kind of a good thing if you're taking a diuretic, because most diuretics cause the potassium to be excreted in the urine, so you have to take a potassium pill or a banana. But if you're taking this pill, it raises your potassium. We also know that if you take a drug known as spironolactone, that's very commonly used in heart failure, well, then there might be a problem because that drug tends to increase the potassium as well. We know there are certain drug interactions, so if you take a diuretic, well, you might be hypotensive if you take too much of either one, and certainly when you stand up, you might get a little lightheaded if you're taking an anti-diabetic drug and you take lisinopril, might reduce the blood sugar more than you want. If you're taking an NSAID, that's an aspirin-like der derivative, a drug like ibuprofen or naproxen, and you take lisinopril at the same time, well, you have to be a little bit cautious about your kidney function, and certainly it's not a good idea to be taking this with lithium. Now, if you discontinue the drug, a day before you have any major non-cardiac surgery, that's a good idea because if you take the drug right through some major surgery, it could actually increase the all-cause mortality, increase the likelihood of having a heart attack or a stroke. And if you drink alcohol, you've got to be careful because the blood pressure might fall, fall even more than you want. Are there any side effects of the drug? Sure, there are side effects of taking any kind of medicine. The most important one is a cough. Some people, because there's a chemical known as bradykinin in the system, and this drug prevents the breakdown of bradykinin, well, bradykinin can cause a cough. If that's a problem, then you can't take the drug. You should switch to a different drug. It also can cause some nausea, vomiting, constipation. It can cause some dizziness in some people, some palpitation, some joint pain, maybe increase the potassium like we said. But overall, very, very safe drug. If you're an elderly individual, you can take the drug without a problem as long as your kidney function is good, as long as your volume is okay. You've got to be a little careful if you're taking a diuretic. Now, there's caution. If you happen to have aortic stenosis, the valve that goes from the heart to the aorta, if it happens to be narrowed or if you have a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, in other words, a lot of muscle around, well, that might cause some obstruction to the outflow of the heart so you have to be a little bit careful. You have to be careful if there's some kidney damage because the potassium might go up. But otherwise, the drug is very safe. It should not be taken, however, if you have a history of angioedema. In other words, if you swell up, if your face swells, if your eyelids swell, if your lips swell, mm, that's probably not for you. And if you happen to be diabetic and are taking a drug known as Tecturna, again, the drug is not for you. We know the drug can decrease your blood pressure, and it does that by decreasing the peripheral resistance. So it opens up the flow of, from the heart by reducing the resistance of the arteries in other areas of the body. It all does that without increasing the cardio, cardiac output, and it doesn't increase the heart rate. However, if you happen to have congestive heart failure, it does those things. So it's kind of like magic. If you have congestive heart failure, it will increase your cardiac output. If you have a heart attack and you start taking the drug at a reduced dose, 5 milligrams once a day for six weeks, the likelihood of your dying falls by about 10%. It goes from about 7.2% if you don't take the drug down to about 6.4% if you do take the drug. So worthwhile taking the drug. Side effects if you have a heart attack, well, it can cause some hypotension. It can cause the blood pressure to go down. Now, there are some other drugs that are relatively closely related, drugs in what we call the angiotensin receptor blocker family, you know those as Diavan and Cozar. Those drugs are relatively similar. They don't have the effect of causing a cough because they're not involved in that bradykinin story I mentioned. The cost of these drugs, phenomenally low if you take the generic drug. The cost for a month worth of potentially life-saving therapy, only 3 to $12. Now, if you go and you take the Zestril, a name brand, the Cinepril, instead of 3 to $12, it's going to cost you, with the coupon at GoodRx, somewhere around $400. If you take Prinavil, that's another type of generic, the Cinepril, it's going to cost somewhere around $50 or $60. So what's my take on this drug? The cost gets a grade A, phenomenal benefit. 
What about the effectiveness of the drug? Again, phenomenal. If you have high blood pressure, this may well be a drug for you. But remember, remember, if you have high blood pressure, you have to do something in excess of just take a pill to reduce it. You gotta watch your diet. You have to watch the amount of sodium, get some exercise, stop smoking, do those sorts of things. You'll live to watch the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thank you.